In this video, I'd like to share some actions which can speed the processing of color infrared photos. These actions work in Photoshop, they work well if you primarily use Lightroom and Photoshop together, and they can also work in Photoshop Elements with some limitations. There's a link in the description below detailing how to download and install these actions in Photoshop. The first couple steps can be done in Lightroom or Photoshop. In this example, I will use Photoshop. So I've opened up this image in Photoshop and because it's a RAW, it's opened up in Adobe Camera RAW. So the first thing that I need to do is select a profile. So I will use the Browse Profiles button and I will look under Profiles and I will select a profile that I've created specifically for this camera. If you'd like information on how to create your own custom profile for your camera, then you can click on the, the link up above and that'll help you. The profile will give you more control over your white balance. So that's really important. So I've selected my profile and I'll hit close. And then the next thing I want to do is select a white balance. So in Adobe Camera Raw, I will use the white balance tool up here in the upper left hand corner and I'll select that and I'm gonna white balance with the clouds because I want the clouds to be white in this image. If you'd like some ideas on how to get the best white balance for your image, I will link to a video that will show you some tips on how to select a white balance. Okay, so we've completed what we need to do in Adobe Camera Raw. If you were in Lightroom at this point, you would right click the image and select Edit in Photoshop, but here I'm just going to select Open Image and that will complete the opening of the image in Photoshop. So I'm gonna hit Control Zero uh, to fill, fill my screen, and now I want to apply the actions. First thing I do is I go to Window Menu, and I select Actions, and this will bring up the Action Menu. You can see I have the, the infrared actions already loaded. If you haven't loaded them yet, you can click on the Menu and select Load Actions, and then find the actions wherever you opened them and then click the load button and that will load them into this panel and you'll see them right here. I've got two variations on the channel mixer method and two variations on invert and then a special effect. So let's walk through each of these. So the first one is the channel mixer method. So if I click this action and then hit the play button, then it'll step through a process of automatically inverting colors using a channel mixer adjustment layer. And then it flattens everything down into a single image and then you're set to go. If you want, you can stop here or you could go back to Lightroom, whichever you prefer. So I'm going to hit F12 in order to revert this back to the way it was before. The, the second option is the IR Channel Mixer plus the Hue Saturation layer. And this does a very similar thing. I'll click play. This will do the same type of inversion, but it will leave me with a hue saturation adjustment layer that doesn't have any settings in it. This is a step that I use on nearly every image that I've converted for infrared because I want to adjust the colors. So it may be that I want to adjust the hue of the overall image to get something that I like, or maybe I want to go into an individual channel, like I want to go into the blues, and maybe I want the sky to be more of a natural blue, and I want to increase the saturation so I can play around with colors, or I want to go to the red channel and maybe reduce the saturation a bit to sort of balance the image out a little bit better between the colors. So I use the hue saturation adjustment layer a lot, but I don't have a preset value for it. So that's here available if you'd like to use that. If you don't like that option, just select the other preset that'll give it to you without that adjustment layer. So you've got both choices. One thing that you should know is that the channel mixer method will not work in Photoshop Elements because there is no channel mixer in Photoshop Elements, so these actions will not run. However, this um, next method, the invert method, will work in both Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. So if I select this action and I hit play, then this will swap the colors in my image. Now it uses the different method. It uses the, the duplicate layer invert the layer and then change the blend mode to hue or color. And then this is the result that we get after it's been flattened. So the, the look will be a little bit different from the channel mixer. Uh, but if you're in elements, this is the only option you have. But if you're in Photoshop, the full version of Photoshop, you can use either of these. So this is, this is what we get with IR invert. Now, if I hit uh, revert and I'll select the next one, which is IR invert plus hue saturation. This will give me the same thing as before. So it will do the inversion, it will flatten that down, and then it will add a hue saturation layer. So again, I can play with the colors if I choose to do so for an individual image. So let's say I wanna to go to the red channel and maybe I wanna adjust these colors 
a bit uh, and play with them. So that's a nice option that I have available to me. The last action that we have here is the Orton effect. This is a, a, a nice effect for creating a glow and it's a little bit more complicated because it involves creating a couple different layers and then doing different things with the layers and then a screen layer and a multiply layer. And I've done this a few times and I thought, oh, this is this is too much for me to remember. I'm just going to make an action out of it. So I've created an action. The, the thing that to be aware of with this action, though, is that it's really important that you select the background layer. If you select the adjustment layer when you run this action, you'll run into problems. So let's select the background layer first. Then I can make sure that this action is selected and then I can hit play. And what this will do is this will create another layer uh, that I've labeled the Orton effect. And this layer sits over top of your bottom layer. And by default, it sets an opacity of 25%. Depending on your image, you can adjust the opacity. Everything down from zero or maybe something around 10% will give you a very mild Orton effect or something along you know, 20, 25%. Or if you want to go higher, uh, it's your choice. I'd say less is more, but uh, this is about your creativity. So you decide what you want to do here and then you select the value and then you're all set. So you've got the, the Orton effect applied to your image. So at this point you can save, you can make additional adjustments in Photoshop. You can save and go back to Lightroom. Really the choice is yours. So that's it. These are the Photoshop actions. Remember to use the link in the description for downloading the actions and for written installation and usage instructions. Feel free to post your questions in the comment below. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.